Talker Universe and welcome to the review of Match Day 2 of the AFCOM. And while I think it is, would be very uh, easy to say, well, the tournament is slightly getting rolling. We had a, a lot more goals. Uh, we had some more, ex we had more exciting games than at the beginning. Um, I think the overarching theme is that we have two real giants in trouble and that it is only two is a little bit also down to luck and uh, you know sometimes a little bit uh, dodgy refereeing because we could have well have three if not four but at the moment it is Algeria and Ghana who I'm not taking away much from it but I can tell you already in the projection both of these teams do, will not qualify at the moment for the next round, which is huge. Ghana, maybe one could potentially a little bit foresee because they have not been the force that they used to be like a decade ago. Uh, but Algeria as the dominant team in Africa over the past few years, uh, being not able to continue is, I think, a pretty, pretty big deal, I gotta say. So uh, that's pretty exciting. I'm wearing Nigeria to me. They're if I would have to bet at the moment, Nigeria is the team that I would pick to win the tournament. Let's pull this straight out there. Uh, they're the only team that uh, has been in both games uh, convincing and they're looking rather, rather good uh, at the moment. But, you know, as tournaments goes on, um, things may change around. If I look at Cameroon, I think the crowd is a huge factor, but they have not been really convincing. Uh, same goes a little bit for Morocco, uh, to be honest. And Senegal has been one of the bigger disappointments so far. Uh, very anemic performances from them. So uh, let's run. At this time, I saw actually uh, at least uh, bits and pieces or highlights from uh, most of the games in the second round. Uh, it really helped that, you know, it was mostly played midweek and so on. Uh, and, you know, I... <laughs> The games are not that great. <laughs> I cannot do work at the net, but it's not like edge of your seat stuff. Although there, there were some edge of the seat uh, games, especially in uh, the end. As I said, Cameroon uh, found themselves very early down to Ethiopia, but then turned around. Tokyo Kambi came, came back in the after half. Uh, Bubakar, who had already scored two uh, at the beginning of the tournament from a penalty spot, scores a brace in a very short short, short time with uh, Ekambi, adding another one a little bit late, later down. As I said, Cameroon uh, with that one already qualified and through. Uh, Burkina Faso then a little bit uh, tougher match, but they get the win over Cape Verde. Um, gotta say Cape already uh, tried and probably would have deserved an equalizer but I was you know Burkina Faso is one of my teams so I wasn't too unhappy. Senegal is Guinea, uh, Guinea uh, honestly Senegal does not look good. Uh, what a disappointment so far. Senegal uh, it's just boring and I think Guinea especially in the first half probably would have deserved the win. Guinea uh, a little bit uh, annoyed me because they did not play in jerseys that I said they are playing in the jersey review, but hey, so be it. This, I call it being Afcon. Um, but I totally love the red, uh, yellow, green Congo co creation dolls. This is for me the most African kit out there over Cameroon because it is so in your face with the red and the yellow and then you have the green down there. Can't come wrong with the greens a little bit more understated, but Senegal, complete disappointment, uh, one has to say. Uh, Morocco similarly did not look all that great, uh, to be honest, but they got at least the goals um, over Comoros. You would expect them to win. Amala scores early, then I think they hit uh, the woodwork uh, once. Uh, they had the many, many chances. Some of them were just great, but the line, they missed the penalty. And very, very, very late on um, uh, Abu Kal, then uh, makes it 2 nil. At the very same time, we had one of was it an upset of the two tournament? But we have two minus uh, playing each other with Mali and Zimbabwe. Uh, with Malawi. Mali is coming later. Malawi and Zimbabwe. Uh, where Zimbabwe actually dominated the first half. Uh, Chad Chaz was at uh, only the 38th minute, fouled the breakthrough through Wadi. And then Malawi scores just before the break through Mbango. Now, uh, the one thing I have to say about Malawi, also jersey red again, not the jerseys that I had in there. But I thought those looked a little bit better. But what a huge numbers are on the back. I mean, number 11, um, Mbango, 
he had too slight of a frame. I mean, the 11 almost wrapped around his sides in, 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 in a way. That was uh, amazing in many, many ways. Uh, Toa loved it. In the second half, Malawi gets the winner. Malawi, probably one of the smallest nations in this tournament, has a win and not too bad chances of advancing, uh, to be honest. But, you know, uh, gotta wait for the final result. And then in the evening, we had Gabon uh, playing Ghana, where, yeah, I gotta say, uh, Ghana largely were the better team through, uh, had a wonderful goal through uh, Ayu. But I again missed to follow up on it. This is the one thing that uh, very free frequently I ob 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 observed that the follow up once you take it is not happening. Gabon found themselves then back in into to the game. Yes, the equalizer through Alevina was probably a little bit against uh, the run of play, but. It was uh, Ghana had it a little bit coming for them because if you you know if you just hold back and not uh, finish your uh, chances and then you go on the defensive, that's not the way to win a game these days anymore because you leave yourself open and that's exactly what happened. Uh, then uh, there were a, lo a lot of uh, bust ups uh, after the final whistle. Seeming seeming like a one player didn't play back the ball to Ghana. And, and so on, uh, a late red card then being issued uh, through Tete, who just clocked a uh, player. So uh, it, it got nasty at the end. And Ghana, again, only one point after two games. Yes, they play Comoros, probably they will qualify, but you know, Comoros might hold up. Uh, as I said, Morocco had a hard time breaking them down. And this is what is needed. And I'm not sure if Ghana actually has the tools, especially with now this emotion in there, uh, to break them down. Uh, no problem for Nigeria against Sudan to break the, uh, uh, to break them down. After three minutes, Chukwese scores the first one. Then Avonyi, I think this was a, f uh, a real uh, funny goal. I mean, it was a shot deflected off a uh, defender onto the head of Avonyi. And made it two to two to nil. It was one of those more, uh, how do I say, uh, entertaining goals. <laughs> I, I I had fun watching that one. Uh, so Nigeria two nil up and cruising. It could have been more. Right after him, Simon makes it three nil, and then they just uh, you know let it uh, roll out. Uh, Sudan actually pulls one back through a penalty penalty. But I said it already. Nigeria now for the first time I saw their uh, proper home jersey, uh, which. Looks all right, but I think it's uh, too many greens in any way. It's still not as good as this one, um, my opinion. But yeah, uh, all over Nigeria look really, really good. They are at the moment, um, as I said, my tip to win the tournament. Uh, they really look well at this stage. Egypt, not so much, but also a little bit of unlucky uh, run of play. I mean, they hit, I think, three times the woodwork, twice in the first half. Uh, I think once in the second half, I mean, Salah makes an excellent, excellent goal. Although goalkeeping, yeah, yeah, but uh, the way he moves in, this was really the Salah that you would expect. And um, he then kind of uh, guides it in, in, in internet, although with a better goalkeeper, I don't think it would have gone, gone in. But that was kind of finally the breakthrough. However, Egypt was really, really lucky because um, Balde scored an equalizer in the 80 second. Uh, wonderful effort. And there was a foul given in the build-up. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I would give this as necessarily as a foul. It was kind of a fight for the ball uh, type of stuff. And I'm not sure if Egypt would have come back from that one. Uh, Guinea-Bissau can see them a little bit, uh, selves a little bit aggrieved. But Egypt actually avoids the fate of Ghana of having only one point. Yes, then playing against Sudan, which in a way is a derby, so you never know. Uh, but Egypt, I would expect to win against Sudan. Uh, but that, that goal basically saved uh, Egypt's uh, tournament for now. Again, not looking all the great, but looking much improved uh, than against Nigeria, although also against a lesser opponent. Um, so yeah, uh, and uh, what I was going to say, at uh, once the whistle blew, it, I was really stunned how all Egyptian players went down to the floor to thank Allah. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, that was uh, pretty 
remarkable and a little bit weird also to watch. Um, Gambia Mali play out only a 1-1, but you know, both are sitting now on four points. Probably that was uh, for them the, uh, the result that they wanted. Tunisia took out all their frustrations from the loss to Mali on Mauritania. Um, after 10 minutes, it was already 2 to nil. Kasri really running the show. The third goal uh, is, uh, from Kasri was a really nicely played. And then again, two minutes later, Jaziri adds a fourth. They missed a penalty as well. Uh, quite some penalty misses already, Galopi said. But it was only one way traffic, and Tunisia look uh, set to uh, move on properly from that group. And then we go to Group E, where uh, the Ivory Coast. Twice had the lead, even missed a penalty through Kessie. Kessie uh, with bald head looks weird to me, I gotta say. Uh, and yeah, uh, Kessie, I think he took a page out of Ibra's book uh, by, you know, taking the penalties too nonchalantly. It was an easy save, it gotta be said. So yeah, he misses penalty, but then Sebastian Alea uh, scores the goal and the Ivory Coast was largely the better team. Uh, and then, more or less with the first shot, shot and goal, Kakamara gets an equalizer for, for, for uh, Sierra Leone, I was about to say Simeone. Uh, but Nicolas Pepe, just a few uh, 10 to 10 times later, a really nice shot. 2-1 and you really think that the Ivory Coast is gonna um, get away with one here again. Uh, it probably would have deserved, but it, uh, similar to what Ghana did, uh, they went in a little bit more defensive. Uh, and I'm not sure if that was the smart thing uh, to, to, to do. I mean, Cassie didn't have, have a good team, Saha also. The, that, that, that's the one thing that I gotta say, uh, when I look at the Ivory Coast squad, they have excellent players. But somehow the team does not work. And then the free goal of the tournament, where I think it was a head headed back to Sierra Diet, and the goalkeeper tries to catch it, but it was kind of a, a, a almost a circus catch. It was not a bad back, uh, it, it was a really bad back pass because he wanted to avoid the corner kick. Uh, catches it, rolls over, hurts his arm, so the ball spills out in front of the goal. Uh, where Cocker uh, then gets it and plays it to Kamara, who had stumbled uh, along the way, but gets him up and uh, puts it in the internet and gets Sierra Leone. A rather lucky 2 2, but a pretty remarkable result overall. Uh, the goalie could not play play on, and Sierra Leone actually went for, for the win because you had uh, they had already made the five changes. So it was an exciting finish, but I have to say, Sierra Leone did not have many shots, shots, shots goal. Ivory Coast would have deserved that win. Um, the game was played in Douala, as was the last game of the round, and this is one thing uh, I said it already in the first um, vi video. The, the level of play is not that great because um, it's largely muggy weather, which is never good. Um, other teams did not have much preparation. And also, it gotta be said, uh, the pitches are not great. And the pitches are also not great because they uh, usually do double headers. And that was the case here in Douala, where first the Ivory Coast against Sierra Leone really ground up the pitch. And once Algeria took the, uh, game, uh, the uh, pitch against Equatorial Guinea, if you looked at it, I mean, this was just one big brown field. It did not look proper. And I think having two matches played on that ground, that's not our great, did really, really hurt, as, uh, especially a great team like Algeria. That's the only excuse I give to them. Yes, they ha have a very tattered -tat -tat team, but it do also does not look right. And especially in the first half, the best chance were fell to Equ Equatorial Guinea. I think they were the better team. In the second half, Algerian really came through uh, and it, it seemed really only a matter of time until they finally score. But then Obiang scores for the for Equatorial Guinea and you knew at that moment there is no way back for Algeria. They just couldn't find uh, any shot on goal and whenever they were in good, good position, they mishit the ball or they couldn't control it pro properly. And I actually think this is where the pitch played a big, big factor there. But Algeria losing the game, so their winning, uh, their unbeaten streak snapped. I'm not sure if, uh, if they're on level with Italy or just one behind Italy. But I think where, of course, the blame will go and maybe a little bit fair because they just won the Arab Cup without their stars, but now they have all the stars from Europe in there. 
like uh, Riyad Mahrez, uh, Ben Azer, Ben Sevaini, all those uh, Feguli, all those big players, and it's not working for them. Uh, they gotta beat the Ivory Coast to have a, cha a realistic chance of moving on, which uh, by talent should, is should be easily in there. But the way they have been playing, not so sure. And as I said, I want to give them a slight excuse, but overall, I think it was a very, very poor showing from Algeria again. And it kind of confirmed the trend overall that um, uh, the Northern African teams don't do well in Sub-Saharan Africa. Because all, uh, you know, Algeria, uh, um, Egypt, to a certain degree, Morocco did not look convincing and Tunisia, yeah, maybe the one, but they are not the big favorite. So the final round, the round of games, we have uh, today already Burkina Faso, Ethiopia and Cape Verde, uh, Cameroon, then um, Malawi, Senegal. If Malawi gets something out of there, they might actually quali quali qualify. Zimbabwe against Guinea. Uh, Guinea could go for a group win here. Uh, Morocco, Gabon, Ghana, Comoros. Uh, Ghana needs to win that one. We know that and Morocco, Gabon, both are more or less through. Then uh, Egypt uh, can fix uh, their spot in the next round with a win over Sudan, Nigeria or through North Shore. What they will be doing. Ivory Coast against Algeria, that's the big one on Thursday. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, and yeah, uh, the other group, uh, Gambia, Tunisia, Mali, Mauritania, uh, Garda Sea, uh, that, that, that's a group where not much has changed. For once here, uh, the, for the first time here, are uh, the standings, only 1.7 goals so far, but it has been really, really, really low after the first round. Um, as I said, Cameroon uh, or, or through Burkina Faso and also Cape Verde not looking too uh, bad. Cape Verde probably needs only a point against Cam uh, against Cameroon. That would actually see them through and Cameroon is already through. Uh, and group winners at that uh, point as well. Senegal, Guinea, I think are virtually through already. Uh, because of having four points, Morocco uh, and Gabon also looking strong. Uh, this is not a 100 hand. I think it's not mathematically through it. Although Morocco seems to be like like that. Ghana on the verge. Nigeria through Egypt, uh, more or less. The other two uh, are fighting for less chance. This might be a group where we won't see someone progressing. Um, the Ivory Coast at the moment still on top, but they have to play Algeria. But I think they look all right. Algeria is only fourth in this group. Uh, same, um, and we'll see about Ghana. Uh, group F, it's Mali, Gambia, Tunisia at the moment. Uh, but we gotta uh, see, and if, if you look at the moment, this is only the third third team, but it's a very uneven. Tunisia, Malawi, Cape Verde, Sierra Leone, Ghana is not in there. That's big. Um, but we also have to look at projections, uh, which actually doesn't change all that much from what, what we've seen. I mean, Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, yes, Senegal, Guinea, Malawi, Zimbabwe. Yeah, we would expect that uh, exactly like that. Ghana only in third place in Group C uh, behind Gabon. And, you know, Gabon, I think, is a, a relatively talented team. Nigeria is already uh, very, very much in first place. Egypt and Guinea Bissau down there. Uh, the Ivory Coast, head of Ecuador, Sierra Leone, is ahead of Algeria in expected points. Algeria need to get something from the Ivory Coast. They need to get a win. They need to get a win there. Mali is still ahead of Tunisia. Tunisia is uh, playing Gambia, so I would expect Tunisia to go through. And again, Ghana, Algeria out and Ghana only in th uh, at the fifth best third place team at the moment. So this sets up a very weird tree and I'm not sure if this will be the final one, but there's no Algeria in there. So the tournament is wide open with Nigeria having a relatively clear path into the semi-final where they are set to meet Senegal. And if they preserve their form at the moment, Nigeria is going to win that one too. Although Senegal is higher rated. So the second column is uh, the rating that I have for these teams. Uh, with Algeria uh, gone, I think, um, you know, the, the bracket for Senegal also looks rather straightforward. Uh, it is actually the Cameroon at the lower part that is a little bit more loaded. But Cameroon, Tunisia, I think it would favor Cameroon to go through through them. I'm not even sure Guinea uh, could give Tunisia some trouble. 
double. And then we still have Ivory Coast against Egypt. That's a pretty big duel. Um, at the moment, it's a really hard, hard one to call. More talents probably on the Egypt side. Uh, Morocco against Malawi, and I think Morocco is the strongest team out of these. Um, and they might only be the, the only North African team where I actually see a realistic chance. It's a Senegal-Morocco final projected at the moment, but I actually think that the third place match, may match is a more likely final. And what a final that would be between Nigeria and Cameroon. Uh, as for overall favorites, based on the rating still Morocco ahead of Senegal and then Cameroon uh, and Nigeria um, as we saw in the projected tournament Algeria fell all the way down to ninth place so uh, pretty pretty big right there as well well that was it for me from my review of what happened at the AFCON during the week um, we have a final round where I will do another video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop a comment below if you want to add something because, you know, there are surely many things that I have not seen. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.